Hey everyone, it's me, John, here with another episode of Itchy Mysteries. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. Um, today I decided to look at a documentary that is a bit older. It's actually about 15 years old now. It's called Biggie and Tupac. And I looked into this um, because so many of you have requested that I try to do a brain scratch on this case. There's something about the scope of this case that I think is too big for me to do with Brain Scratch until I'm able to afford a lot more resources and really dig into this case. But I did want to kind of get my feet wet just with the subject matter, just to see what the theories out there were. Um, and I do think this film is a good way to do that. It's directed by Nick Broomfield. Uh, you might know him from some other documentaries like Kurt and Courtney, uh, Eileen, Life and Death of a Serial Killer. He has some pretty good history when it it comes to doing documentaries of this type and this film um, really kind of interjects him as a character and I know in previous reviews that I've done I've talked to you guys about that that I'm really not sure how I feel when the filmmaker becomes a character in the piece um, but I think for some reason here it, it kind of works it kind of reminds us that this is just a person, this is just this person's perspective on what's going on with this specific case. So let me read the um, synopsis from IMDb real quick. Documentary on the deaths of Tupac Shakur and Biggie Smalls and the East Coast West Coast hip hop rap rivalry that culminated in late 1996 and early 1997. And when this film first started, I kind of felt like, um, well, first of all, I was thinking, this is why I can't cover this on Brain Scratch. Like, this topic is just all over the place. Uh, the film feels very loose at the, at the beginning. Um, there is a bunch of great, what I would consider, you know, historical archive footage in this film. He's, he has plenty of footage of both Tupac and Biggie. So um, you will certainly get a sense of what their lifestyle was like around uh, that time. But... It does focus kind of on the hip hop rap rivalry and what started that. Um, and it does all of that in a pretty good way. It almost, It's almost like there's this half hour documentary outside of um, searching for the killers uh, or killer of both of these men. Um, there's this, this good 30 minutes that's really just about the culture of hip hop and rap at that time. And, you know, I always kind of look at these things also as a time capsule. This is one of the strongest time capsules I've I've seen so far. Just the type of footage they got. Um, also the music. Really, really good stuff all packed into um, the first half of the film. Now, luckily, as it goes on, um, he does narrow his scope. And it's kind of unfortunate because he mentions several different theories. I'm talking about Nick Broomfield, the director. Um, as he's going through this, he does mention several different theories, but he doesn't really go into all of them. The few that he does go into, he goes into pretty in depth, but he doesn't really show you any information that counters that. So you kind of have a few people that are willing to speak to this guy that is you know, walking around with a camera following him and he's holding a big boom mic in everyone's face. Um, you, you know, you have to understand that just from the, the presentation of that, you're probably not going to get everyone to open up to you. Um, but he does get some people to talk. He does represent their thoughts about the case fairly well. Um, he just doesn't do a whole lot to dig beyond that or under it or get uh, the, the flip side of those theories. So... In the end, um, I really liked the way that it focused towards the end. It's almost like the second half of the movie is completely different from the first half in terms of kind of his focus and what he's going for. It does feel like this neat kind of adventure, and I think that's one of the pluses of him introducing himself as a character to this piece. Uh, he even shows all these attempts for him to get information that are just total failures. Like at the start of it, I was like, oh my God, this guy's a mess. He's not going to get anything. But then he does get into some pretty interesting situations and he does get some pretty interesting information out of people. So um, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good primer to this case. It certainly caught my interest. I am going to be looking into this a lot more. From what I see, there is another film that is currently in development um, that it looks like will be released pretty soon here as well. 
Um, and I'm, I'm going to ask you guys, are you familiar with films specifically about Tupac and Biggie? If you are, please tell me about them in the comments below because I want to watch a lot more of these and come to understand this information a lot better than I currently do, even after watching Biggie and Tupac. Um, it is available on Netflix. That's where I caught it. Right now on IMDb, it is rated a 6.9 out of 10. I have to agree. I'd give it a 7. I think it could be a bit stronger, particularly if he looked at the flip side on some of those theories. Um, and I don't know. Um, in terms of the footage, it was good. In terms of the music, I think it was good and appropriate. Um, introducing himself as a character, I saw some pluses to that. And like I said, it's a good reminder that this is a man's perspective as he's trying to take on this challenge. Uh, and a foreigner, nonetheless, you know, um, trying to get into... Um, these situations where he can learn the truth of what's going on with this case. And if nothing else, by the time you get to the end of this film, you're going to hear a couple theories and it's going to leave you probably pretty unsettled because for me personally, it does seem like there is some element of coordination that has happened around this case. And there might be some information that is being obstructed for reasons that quite honestly might not even have been covered properly or mentioned in this movie, but it did leave me unsettled. Um, so I think it's worth your time. Check it out if you have Netflix. You can also rent it from a couple places and it looks like it even airs on certain cable channels occasionally, still currently. Pretty good for a piece of film that is 15 years old. Oh, I did also want to mention the way that he shot it, the equipment that he was using. Um, it was, I, I'm pretty sure it was a film camera. It might have even been a 16 millimeter. I think it worked really well because the graininess of the film that he was getting matched very nicely to the footage that he got from other sources uh, of that time period. It looked really, really smooth. It wasn't like there was, you know, a new super sharp image of him talking and all of a sudden you're looking at this grainy old footage of these guys out on the street rapping or something like that. It was really blended very nicely. I think he honestly made a good choice to kind of go low budget with this production in terms of his equipment. Um, so I think it's worth your time. Thank you so much for hanging out with me here on Itchy Mysteries. I hope you're having a great day. Hope to see you back here on the Lord and Arts channel. Take care. <laughs>